Hey everybody, this is D Hunter, bringing another action figure review. Today, we're going to be looking at the McFarlane Batman Classic TV Series 1966 Adam West TV show, Radioactive Batman. This guy's part of the newest wave of McFarlane Classic TV Series figures. We've got King Tut, Two-Face, and Radioactive Batman. I ordered this figure from CMD Store. It's a Canadian website, but I saw... Both CMD Store and Figurine for All both have these in stock, ready to ship right now. So let's take a look at the packaging. As you can see at the top, DC, McFarland Toys, ages 12 plus, Batman, classic TV series. Here he is in the package. They finally come with traditional accessories, not the action bubble effects. Even though those are cool, I would much prefer accessories. We have a Batarang and a Bat Radio, and then Batman with this ridiculous pink cowl. On the back side, here's Batman with the cowl, and here's his barcode. In case that helps anybody. So without further ado, let's open him up. And yes, I did get the entire wave from that website. King Tut and Batman from the TV show and Two-Face from the 66 comic. All right, now they got this figure out of the package. Here he is with all his accessories laid out. He actually comes with accessories, not just those action bubble effects, which are cool, but accessories are much preferred. He comes with a Batarang and then a little Bat Radio. But before I take a look at those, let's talk about and check out the actual figure. So this is Radioactive Batman. He's from a two-part episode called The Contaminated Cowl and The Mad Hatter Runs Afoul. I really hope they make a Mad Hatter figure now that they're making this Batman for that episode. Kind of seems like it's a sign. Fingers crossed. So let's take a look at him. Now it looks absolutely ridiculous. That bright pink cowl on top of that traditional bat suit. Looks like my guy's ears are a little bent. Let's see if I can fix that here shortly. Pink cowl, Adam West likeness on the mouth and chin area. Looks good, but looks preposterous and ridiculous. Go for the down, got the yellow oval around the bat symbol. Single jointed elbows, single jointed knees, cloth cape. Pretty good looking figure. Definitely not what I would call necessary for the collection on your, unless you're a completist like myself. Just a closer look at his face and head sculpt. Typical Batman cowl, of course, in this ridiculous pink color. And then my ears are bent due to the packaging. Let's heat up some water and see if that'll get corrected. I did put in some hot water and the ears straightened up pretty nicely. Now let's check out his accessories and let's start off with the Batarang. Here's his Batarang. Typical bat symboled, blue, 60 style. Looks very nice. And it has a little hole in the corner. I guess that's so you can attach your own bat rope if you want. Here's this Batman holding and getting ready to throw his batarang. Here's his little bat radio. A little radio there, place to speak into. A couple antennas. Here's Batman on the little radio. Probably talking to Alfred. Now they're taking a pretty good look at both the figure and his accessories. Now let's check out his height. From bottom to the top of his head, he's standing at about 5.9 inches tall, which can translate to about 15 centimeters. Now for his articulation. Let's start with his head. You can rotate from side to side. That's about it there. Shoulders on a ball joint. Goes out a little bit more than 90 degrees. Up, down, around, all that good stuff. Single jointed elbow. Goes in about 90 degrees. It does have rotation. He's got a glove cut here. He's got a wrist rotation here. Torso is one solid piece. Traditional waist swivel, old school style hips, they go forward all the way, back about that much. Single jointed knee, about a 90 degree bend with rotation. And that's about it on the articulation department. Here's Mad Hatter in the villain's lair. He's got a hostage. Of course it's Alice. Batman with his radioactive cowl is going to take him down. Now let's check him out. Next is other action figures. Starting off with some other McFarlane 1966 Batman figures. Here he is, next to the standard 1966 Adam West Batman. I believe it is 100% the same figure, just with a pink cowl. Then, with the retro 4 packs lunchbox version, once again, exact same sculpt. Here he is, next to the black and white version, once again, exact same sculpt. Go from one extreme to the other. Super bright, over the top Batman, to a dull black and white Batman. And here, next to Alfred as Batman, at least this one has a little bit of a different head sculpt for Alfred. Then, next to the unmasked Bruce Wayne Adam West Batman. And now, next to both the swimsuit Batman and the boxing Batman. 
These are both very specific Batman figures. Each one is intended for a specific villain. Swimsuit Batman versus Joker, Radioactive Cal Batman versus Matt Hatter, and then Boxing Batman versus Riddler. Here he is with a bunch of other 1966 Adam West Batman figures. Now strike him out. Next is one of their recently released McFarlane 1966 Batman figures. Here he is the rest of his wave. King Tut, Radioactive Cal Batman, and Two-Face. Then, with the previous wave, Egghead, and then Black and White Robin and Riddler. Here's the wave before that. This one had Mr. Freeze, and then Black and White Batman and Joker. And before that, they released this retro 4 pack lunchbox box set. Here he is, next to McFarlane's regular Batman and Robin. Then, with Mattel's Batman and Robin, here's this new Batman, next to the core four Batman villains for the show, Catwoman, Joker, Riddler, and Penguin. These are McFarlane's versions. Then, next to Mattel's versions of the same rogues, here he is, next to NECA's 1966 Adam West Batman. And here, next to Mattel's DC Multiverse 1966 Alan Napier Alfred. And here he is, next to a custom Adam West Bruce Wayne and Burt Ward Dick Grayson that I made. I think the Bruce Wayne looks fantastic, but Dick Grayson looks kind of like a midget. I'm going to find a different body for that head. And here's this Batman, next to a custom egghead and bookworm my wife made for me well over 10 years ago. I have McFarlane's egghead figure, and I hope they give us a bookworm. Now strike him out with some other colorful Batman figures. Here he is with the DC Direct Rainbow Batman 6-pack. Then with Mattel's DC Multiverse Rainbow Batman. Then, next to both Mattel and McFarlane's Zernar Batman, which I nicknamed Crazy Colorful Batman. Now let's check him out. Next to some action figures from different various companies to see how he fits in both scale and style-wise, in case you want to know which lines you can mix him with. Since he's a McFarlane retro 1966 Batman figure, they're on the smaller end of what I collect, 6-inch scale. I'm going to start off my comparisons with some of the smaller action figure lines I collect and work my larger. Here he is, next to some Jazzwares Fortnite figures, and I'm going to include as many Batman figures as I can during these comparisons. And here he is, next to some SH Figure Arts Batman figures. Here's this Batman, next to a bagel. Then, next to some Hasbro Marvel Legends. And here he is, next to some Mayfix Batman figures. Then, next to some Mattel, DC Universe Classics, and Multiverse figures. And here he is, next to some Mezco 112 Collective Batman figures. And now, with some Jazzwares AEW wrestling figures, then with some Mattel WWE wrestlers, and here he is, standing with some NECA Batman figures, then with some DC Direct and DC Collectibles Batman figures, and here he is with some of his McFarlane Toys brothers, here he is next to four different McFarlane DC Multiverse Batman figures, they're 7 inch scale, these 66 figures are 6 inch scale, then next to some DST or Diamond Select Toys, and finally Next to some Jack specific wrestling figures. So overall, he's a cool but definitely not a necessary Batman figure. The pink cowl is absolutely ridiculous, and if I wasn't a completist, I would totally pass on this figure. He does have that sort of charm of the 66 show over the top, colorful, ridiculous. His accessories are fantastic. Best accessories in the collection yet. Articulation, it's limited, but that's expected. Sculpt and paint job are excellent. I don't see any issues there. If I were to rate this guy, probably going to give him a 5 out of 10. Just kind of a pointless Batman to add to the collection. So this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say with the video, add to the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I'll talk to you guys real soon.